Have you ever wanted to add in an intro video to your YouTube videos so that I can say like who you are and what you're about really fast in just a few seconds? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it yourself without having to hire a video editor or look on Upwork or Fiverr for someone to do it for you. You can do it yourself and I'm going to share step by step how to do it and you can do it in less than 20 minutes. I can promise you that. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this intro video to your YouTube channel, if you want to make an intro to your YouTube channel. So it's something like that. Very simple, easy to do. It might look complicated, but it's not complicated at all. The first thing we would need to do is make a new project and import some elements. So we're going to go to media. I imported this element and I found this easily on Pexels. You can go to pexels.com, give us screen, pexels.com, go to videos, and then search for intro. And then you can search for a type of intro that you like. Like you could say intro calm, intro happy, intro whatever. And you can like search through, like this one's kind of a cool flame if you have a, like a highly entertainment channel or something like if you have a tarot card reading channel, you could use something celestial. Um, the smoke one could be for, I don't know, <laughs> some sort of storytelling theme, but you could find something that you like. And here's the one that I used from Luis Quintero. Um, so I just hit download, went to my downloads, and then I went to here in CapCut and I went to import. Then I go to my downloads and I download it. And it tells you from Pexels what um, FPS it's at. So you can adjust your video file to match it. So this one came in at 24 FPS. So I can go over, if we click anywhere in this uh, timeline or anywhere I'm not on something, we can see the details of this file. I have already changed it to 24 FPS, but let's say it wasn't in that, that already. It was in something like 30 FPS. We would go into modify and we could change it and we can change the title to like intro car channel, something like that. And then we can hit save. Well, actually let's put it back to 24 FPS. Then we can hit save. So now our details are all updated. So it's 24 FPS. So when I drag this clip in, it will be at 24 FPS. So I'm going to drag this clip in and I'm going to show you how we've changed it. First thing I did was I shortened it. Um, I didn't want my intro to be super long. So uh, I guess this is originally probably about five, minutes, five seconds long. Um, and I made it a little bit shorter. So about two seconds long. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find the part that I like the most. It kind of repeats. So I think that this is really nice and this is nice. So we can go from here for about two seconds. So five, I'm looking up here at the number that it's on. It's on five. Let me go six and then seven, somewhere about here where I want to clip it. So I do control B to clip it and make it in half, or I can choose W uh, to split everything off to the right. So I did that with W. And if you go up here, you can do it this way as well. Delete right. So if I clicked on this, where it's, where if I move this uh, marker wherever on the timeline and I hit this, it will delete everything from this point over. So now you can see that's gone. I can do control Z. And if I use this one, which is the short keyboard shortcut is Q, then it deletes everything from the left. Um, and you can also just do control B um, to do a split. So you can see that the shortcut when you hover over that as well. Okay, so now we have our shortened clip. Another thing you can notice is that with this, I actually changed the colors. It's not just black the whole time. If you look, um, if I turn these layers off, you can see that it's changing colors here. It's like a more gold color and here it's more blue. And I, I keyframed a few colors in that. And here you can see those keyframes of the colors that I changed. So we can do that as well. I want to show you about keyframes. Keyframes allow you to modify something in a way that you decide how it changes and when it changes. So if we're going to modify the color, we go to the video and we, and let's go to the beginning of it. We go up, sorry, select it, go up to adjustments, and we're going to go to color. And we're going to play around with these three things. So I'm going to select right now and set keyframes at this color for the beginning of the film or the beginning of the clip. Then I'm going to scrub through the timeline a bit and I'm going to change the colors. So I'm going to change it to a heavy blue. And then I'm going to scrub a little bit further and I'm going to change it to maybe more yellow, maybe yellow. Then I'm going to go a little bit further and I'm going to put it more pink perhaps. Oh, there's not much to see in this spot, but we can leave it pink. Uh, and then we scrub a little bit further. Again, there's not much color happening here. Maybe we go here 
and we could make this color more, you know, reddish color, something like that, like a burning color. And then we can start to maybe transform the color back to something more cool, uh, like a little more cool. Not completely cool, but maybe like a more, a little more yellow color, not so orangey. So now we can see when we play this by hitting space bar, we can see the colors changing on that piece of film. Okay, so that's the one thing we did for the background. We changed it a little bit so it's not just the plain background, black and white the whole time. Then we wanted to add text to it. So we can go and we can grab text. So I just go up here to text and I add default text and we drag it down onto here. Uh, we want the text to come in a little after the intro so that it doesn't come in all at once. Um, and then the text is here. Oh, this layer is off. Okay, so then it comes in just regular default text, but we want it to be, this is racing with Rob. So we want the text to be kind of cool. So we're gonna do racing. Maybe we do racing and then with Rob. The other one, I didn't do that. I just did all, well, it comes in all caps anyway, this text font that we use, but then we can go to fonts and find a font we like. So um, I wanted something to do with racing. So I was looking for fonts that looked really, kind of cool that actually, you know, look like a racing font. Ooh, Halloween, let's use Halloween. Okay, so now we have Halloween. And also I wanna change the color. I don't want it to be white. And I also would like the color to maybe transform with the background kind of changing. I think I did that over here. Yeah, I changed form, transform the color. So again, we do the same process just so you can get used to keyframing. Uh, I'm also going to shorten this because we want this to be shorter. So you just drag it in and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to uh, go to the keyframe, the first color. I don't want the first color to be white though. So I'm going to make it yellow first and then I'm going to keyframe that color. Then I move scrub through the timeline a little bit, add a different color. Let's make it kind of more orange. When you, as soon as you change it, it, it puts a keyframe for you. You scrub a little bit further. Let's make it maybe kind of this orangey color, scrub a little further. Maybe we actually go to the blue realm, maybe darker blue is better. And then we could have one final change, which would be maybe orange or red. And another thing you can do is you can copy keyframes. So let's say I like this first color again, so we can do control C, then move our, our time frame to here and hit control V and paste that time time um, keyframe there. So now we have it's changing colors as it's going through. Okay, so the other thing I added onto this was that we don't just want this words to pop in and pop out. That's very boring when such an intense background. So we wanna have like something cool happening with the text. So I wanna animate it. So I'm gonna select the text box. I'm gonna go up to animations and I'm gonna find one that I like so there's in and out in animations. So we're bringing this in first. So we wanna look in the in animations. And this is the one I liked with this kind of flame thing because it's car racing. So I think that's kind of cool. This one could have worked too. Okay, and I'm gonna select this one and it's gonna put it on there. So now it's on there, we hit play. It's a little fast, so I wanna slow it down a little bit. So what you can do is you can extend this is that this line shows you how long it takes for that animation to happen. I would like to extend it a little bit. So up here in the animation with your text block selected, it says it's 0.5 seconds right now. You could type in something else, but I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit. So now it's a little bit longer. So it's a little bit slower to say racing with Rob instead of so fast. Okay, so then we want to add in, so this is how it's coming in. And we also wanna think about how it goes out of the scene. So we select the text again and we go to animation out. And we look at the different ways we could have it go out of the scene. Um, and I liked in the last one, I used the glitch effect. So I can find the glitch effect again here and I click on it and now it pushes the glitch, glitch effect onto there. So it's coming in with this racing thing and then it's going out with a glitch like that. Okay, and then we want this um, when it glitches out, we want to have a sound effect for that. And we also want to have a sound effect when racing with Rob comes in. So with racing with Rob, I wanted to have a sound effect that was like squealing tires. So I went up to audio and I went to sign sound effects and I put in car, I just put in car. And then when I came up with was, I think it was car brake. So, uh, race car 
motionless car, rollover succinct, car racing sounds too. That actually sounds pretty cool. Um, I used this car, bic oh, car bicycle sudden brake slip. That was what I used. But we could try this one. I think it sounds kind of cool too. So we can bring this in. And we want the sound to start where the text comes in. So it actually seems to align quite nicely where I brought it in. So if I hit play now, it works pretty good, but it's a little long. So what I want it to do is to stop making the sound once the frill words have come in. So that's where the sound should kind of stop. So what we can do is drag this, oops, drag the ending of this to be about here. And we can also then have it fade out. So it's, it's kind of fading out at that point. So let's try that. It's kind of abrupt. So we should probably extend it out a little bit more. That's good. And then it glitches out and then we do the glitch. But I think with this one, since that is a longer sound than this original sound, we can extend this out a little bit and we can extend this out a little bit. I do want the name to go away faster though. So I'm going to actually move this back. Yeah, it could be a little bit longer so we can see racing with Rob for a little bit longer. Then it goes away. So where the glitch happens, where this glitch starts to happen, I want to have a glitch sound. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type glitch and find a sound that I like. This is too long. You can notice right away it's so long, but we want something like one second. I kind of like this one, Suzaza. Oh, that's the same one I chose last time. So I'm going to drag Suzaza down and we want the glitch sound to start where the glitch starts to happen, which is lining up quite well. So then we hit play and then everything glitches out. And I like that. And I think this could actually have in like a TV animation, like a TV move, like a glitch itself. So if we go to animation for this and we go out, we could do like a TV glitch out. It kind of like <clears throat> shuts it down. That's kind of interesting. If we add that on. Yeah, I like that. Okay, here we go. Perfect. So that's the end. So now we have our intro video for our scene. And then we would just simply go to export and we would export the clip and save it as 1080 um, MP4 and 24 frames per second. And then we would hit export. We want to make sure it's saved in the right location. And then we would export it and we'd be able to watch it however we like it. So now you can see that if we watch these videos, these are the two videos that we created. And here's the other one. So a little bit different, but um, similar ideas. And then once you start a new CapCut project, so if we close this out and we go to start a new project, let's say you have a talking head or something. So you import all your videos, like let's pull this in. We have this video that we want to show. Um, and then we want to pull in that other intro video. So let's choose this one, hit open. Now it's in there. So I'm just going to take some of this talking head video. Okay. And then I'm going to drag that down here. And then I'm going to show that this video is about me talking and saying something in the intro. And then let's say I say in this video, we're going to find all this stuff. And then I want to have my little intro. So I can just simply drag this down into this spot and have that intro come play. So talking head, talking head, talking head, then Welcome to Racing with Rob. And then we go back to Talking Head. So there you have it. You can easily import it into your videos and then you can export your video once it's done. I can show you that I'm starting a, I'm creating a course right now. And this is my intro that I have on my course, which you can see here. And I did that easily with just bringing in an element from Pexels, and then I added on font and animated the font in. That's all I did. Super simple, and it looks very professional. So there's a lot of things you can do and play with in here, but hopefully this gives you some idea of how to start to create intros for your videos. You just got to get creative and play around with it. And another thing you can do is go watch other YouTube channels and see what their intros are like. But I would keep them as short as possible so that they don't lose your viewers when they are shown.